Hi, this is Jaya. In this video, we shall see the summary of The Man with the Hoe, a poem by Edwin Markham. Hoe is a gardening tool where it will have a long handle and a small blade. It is used to remove the weeds around a plant. And here Edwin Markham says that he saw a painting by French artist Jean Francis Millet and uh, this uh, poem, painting was named The Man with the Hoe. And seeing this painting, he was inspired and he wrote this poem in 1862. And he also writes a quotation from the um, Bible uh, where it says that human beings, we believe that every one of us are created by God and God had created human beings uh, to resemble him itself. We resemble God, the appearance. We are not like a horse or a, or a snake or any other living being, but we represent physically God. And here he asks many questions which uh, uh, really pains the heart. He says, years of hard work had left this person who is working very hard, the laborer, stooped, he is almost bent over his hoe, and he's staring at the ground. And this is what laborers have been doing for many generations before him. That is, uh, it is uh, the painting does not represent one person. It is representing all the laborers all over the world. And not only the present generation, but all the previous generations before him. And if you look at his face, there is nothing. But if you see means... The whole society is depending on what he is harvesting and reaping. And the poet questions, who is responsible for this? Because this man, the laborer, he cannot experience the highs and lows of human emotion. He is a human being. But he has no uh, opportunity to enjoy or show any sort of feelings. Like he cannot even mourn if he has a loss. And he can never have any hope for the future because he knows that throughout his life he has to work like this only. And he is questioning like who made him into something almost like a farm animal who is not able to say anything, who is not able to feel also anything, is not allowed to experience any feeling. And he is asking who made his savage jaw hang open and who made his bros hang heavy, who did all this? And who had extinguished his ability to think because he is not allowed to think. He is only uh, allowed to obey. And he is saying, is this the same being that God created? And why did God create human beings to rule over the earth's natural resources? But is he the same person whom God created? God created human beings to gaze up at the stars and search for meaning. But does, does this man have the chance to do it? And God created human beings to embrace life fully. Is he given that opportunity? Is this man really what God who created the entire universe intended when creating human beings? Did God have an intention that there should be a division between the human beings? Where one part of the human beings will enjoy life. Whereas the other part will toil very hard to allow these people to enjoy. Was that God's intention? And he says, even in the furthest stretches of hell, these people would not find a worse shape than this man's body. Because he is so bent and his face is only filled with sorrow. He is not even able to express any feelings. And he says, there is no shape more marked by society's blind greed. No shape that more obviously represents a warning about humanity's soul. So he is asking, where is our humanity? And the condition of workers threatened to undermine the spiritual health of all the people in this world. Because these people are in such miserable situation. And then he says, there is so much of difference. There is a huge difference between this man and the angels. See, God created angels and human beings in the same appearance as him. But when he sees this laborer who represents this one painting represents all the laborers in the world, he says there is a huge difference distance between them. And because he must work constantly in order to live, to survive, he has no time for any intellectual pursuits such as philosophy and astronomy. And what could music, art and beauty have any meaning to him at all? 
you can only see the sufferings of workers throughout the ages in this frightening body of the laborer and the tragic oppression of the working class throughout the history is reflected in his bent posture he is half bent his frightening body represents a betrayal of humanity itself as he has been robbed defiled and denied a fair share of what he actually produces however workers like him resist exploitation by seeking justice which actually foreshadows a future when history will look back on the current society as a failure and the poet then asks the most privileged people in the society that is the ruling class how can they expect to receive divine blessings when they exploit workers in the way they have for so long warping their bodies into something monstrous and snuffing out their souls and he also asks how do they plan to repair this body and revive its immortal soul how do they plan to raise its gaze from the ground and return the spark of light to its mind to restore its joy and hope and he also continues to question like how do they plan to atone for this ancient sin because it is not done only by them it has been done for generations and generations by the ancestors and fix the mess they made of god's creation he continues asking the ruling class how will future societies look back on the brutal and monstrous suffering they inflicted on the working class how will the new world reckon with them when the time comes that the workers rise up and resist what will become of those with so much power and wealth those who inflicted all the suffering and after sinning for so long how will they answer to god this is the question he asks let's see the poem written after seeing millet's world famous painting so in the beginning itself he says i wrote this poem after seeing his famous painting and he takes these lines from the bible saying god made man in his own image in the image of god made he him he this is god him is human being these lines are taken from genesis and the poem goes like this bowed by the weight of centuries he leans upon his hope see it is not only this man who suffered his father his grandfather his great grandfather that is for so many centuries these people have been bowing down and working and that is why that weight of all the centuries of work is upon this man and is leaning on his hope and gazes on the ground the emp- emptiness of ages in his face for ages they have never shown any expression and there's only one emptiness on his face because there is no hope for him and on his back the burden of the world but the world depends on him only if he harvest the world can enjoy who made him dead to rupture and despair a thing that grieves not and that never hopes see he is a person who cannot even cry for any loss he cannot hope for anything good stalled and stunned a brother to the ox he is almost next to the ox which is in a a farm so he is almost made like a farm animal who loosened and let him down this brutal jaw and is asking who made his jaw also to drop down he is almost like an animal whose was the hand that slanted back this bro his bro shows his unhappiness his sorrow and whose hand was reasonable for all this whose breath blew out the light within this brain who gave him that situation where he can never think of anything intellectual in his life is this the thing the lord god made and gave to have domain over sea and land so he's saying look at the laborers did god create these men with this intention to trace the stars and search the heavens for power to feel the passion of eternity see god would have created human beings only for all this but is the laborer allowed is this a dream he dreamed here he means god who shaped the suns and marked their waves upon the ancient deep so god who created the suns he only created human being did god ever dream of giving such a life to this human being the laborer down all the stretch of hell to its last gulf there is no shape more terrible than this he is saying even if you go and search in hell you cannot see a terrible shape like this this man is fully bent because of centuries of work 
more tongued with censure of the world's blind greed, more filled with science and portents for the soul, more fraught with danger to the universe. What gulfs between him and the seraphim? Seraphim means angels. Slave of the wheel of labor, what to him are Plato and the swing of Pleiades? What the long reaches of the peaks of song, the rift of dawn, the reddening of the rose. Through this dread shape the suffering ages look. He will not enjoy anything around him. And this very shape itself shows he has been suffering here for ages and ages. Time's tragedy is on that aching stoop. Through this dread shape humanity betrayed plundered, profaned and disinherited. Christ protests to the judges of the world, a protest that is also prophecy. So he says, this man has been robbed of everything for centuries and now all over, all over the world the laborers are protesting and later on they protest will become a prophecy and that will really hurt the whole human mankind. O masters, lords and rulers in all lands. Now he addresses the ruling party like uh, all the landlords and the masters of these people and he says is this the handiwork you give to God he's saying is this the way you are going to treat God because man is a reflection of God and if you're going to treat this laborer so bad it means this is the way you're treating God because he is God's creation this monstrous thing distorted and soul quenched how will we ever straighten up the shape Touch it again with immortality. Give back the upward looking and the light. Rebuild in it the music and the dream. Make right the immemorial infames. Perfidious wrongs, immedical woes. You have to make everything correct. Because for centuries we have wronged these people. And if we want to get God's divine blessing, we have to rectify what our ancestors have done. O oh, masters, lords and rulers in all lands, how will the future reckon with this man? How answer his brute question in that hour when whirlwinds of rebellion shake the world? So he says, in future, when people question you, what will you answer? And when they protest, shakes the world, how will you face it? How will it be with kingdoms and with kings, with those who shape him to the thing he is, when this dumb terror shall reply to God after the silence of the centuries? So he says, now these people are silent and they are bearing with whatever they have done because they don't know that there is a different life because they have seen their ancestors suffering like this and they think that their life is destined like that. But you have to answer God who created these people and what answer do you have to give to God? With this he says, the poem is over, but it really uh, raises a lot of questions in our minds. It's a beautiful uh, song. If you have anything more to add on to what I've said, please write it in the comment box. Like the video, share it with your friends. And if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe and support. Thank you.